So the next thing I want to discuss is section 10.2, sine and cosine. Suggested exercises are 1, 3, 5, 21, 23, 31, 35, 41, and 55. And a lot of these, again, are going to be pretty quick. So sine, cosine. Those are the two ideas and the examples that I'd like for you to look at slash work through because there's there are quite a few here one through five and eight so work through some of them if you can't work through every single one I understand so I'm gonna present a version of sine and cosine today and the the thing is there are a number of equivalent ways to view sine and cosine and we'll see some of them today uh, but there, you know, maybe the way that I present this doesn't make a whole lot of sense to you, and you say, oh, well, I, I saw this other resource online that presented sine and cosine in a different way, and that makes more sense. Well, it's fine. It's not like there's a right way and a wrong way. There are just a bunch of different ways to view sine and cosine. Okay, so getting right into it, I'll say the value of a trigonometric so that trigonometric functions are going to be any of these sine, cosine that we're studying this time, and, and there are a whole bunch of other trigonometric functions. Uh, the value of a trigonometric function at a real number t is just its value at t radians. So we're going to assume the input is radians for, for now. Later we can sort of talk about a different version of the trig functions that are going to take in degrees. And you can write the same way and people just understand if the input is in degrees, then we use the degrees tr uh, trig functions. If the input is not in degrees, then we use the uh, radians trig functions. Um, if x comma y is a point on the unit circle then uh, point on the unit circle how do I want to say this uh, centered at the origin I'm going to say it like this. I'll draw a picture to make this last little bit a little bit clearer. Corresponding to t radians, then cosine of t is the x, and sine of t is the y. So uh, what's happening here? Well, I'm going to draw a little picture. So let's suppose that we've got a unit circle here. And I've just got part of the unit circle. Then if I have this angle, which is t radians, then the, the coordinates of this point here are going to be cosine of t, sine of t. So the y value is going to be the sine of t. And the x value is going to be the cosine of t. And sine we denote S I N, and cosine we denote we denote C O S. Um, now, I'm going to give you just a table of special values that you should learn, um, and then we can talk through how how you get some of these values, and we can also talk through a quick way to remember them. But the main thing is, I'm, I'm just going to give you this table of special values. Um, and you should have these at quick recall, either memorized or be able to generate this chart quickly. So I'm going to give you degrees. I'm going to give you radians. And then we're going to have sine of theta. And we're going to have cosine of theta. So we're going to have 0 degrees, 30 degrees, 45 degrees, 60 degrees, and 90 degrees. And each of these degree measures correspond to 
0 radians, pi over 6 radians, pi over 4 radians, pi over 3 radians, and pi over 2 radians, respectively. So um, you can get each of these from converting between degrees and radians, like we talked about last time, which is by multiplying by uh, 360 over 2 pi, or some people teach this as 180 over pi. So sine of 0, or 0 degrees, would be the y value of a 0 degree angle. So what's the y value of a 0 degree angle? Well, it's the y value of this point right here. This point right here has x coordinate 1 and y coordinate 0. Similar, the 90 degree angle has x coordinate 0 and y coordinate 1. All right. Now you might be wondering, okay, wait, why is he writing x, y? And then over here, he's writing sine, cosine. Uh, it's just people tend to list sine first and list cosine second. You can write it out however you want. Now, if I wanted to figure out, uh, let's, let's do 45 degrees next. A quick way to see 45 degrees is if I have uh, this 45 degree angle here. Well, what, what do I have? It's halfway, right? This is 45 degrees, or pi over 4 radians. It's halfway uh, from here to here, which means it's symmetric. So this value and this value should agree, right? So I need two numbers that, that add up that, that, that are the same, but their squares should add up to 1, right? Because I know that a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So if the, this is a unit circle, you know, then the length of this hypotenuse here is 1. Then I've got, you know, the cosine it would, be, would be a, and the, the sine would be b, say. But these two happen to be equal. So b equals a. Then I've got a squared plus a squared equals 1. So this tells me 2a squared equals 1. And this tells me uh, a equals the square root of 1 half. Now, I, I've told you several times throughout this um, course that I don't plan to do a lot of rationalizing the denominator, because it just doesn't matter too much to me. But in this case, we are going to multiply this by root 2 over root 2 to get the answer square root of 2 over 2. So the sine of 45 degrees is square root of 2 over 2, and the cosine of 45 degrees is square root of 2 over 2. Uh, finally, the last thing we want to do is 30 degrees and 60 degrees, which we can do from the, the same sort of picture. We're going to draw an equilateral triangle here. And some of you may know that if I've got an equilateral triangle, all of these angles are 60 degrees. So I'm going to take an equilateral triangle and cut it in half. And if I've cut this in half, I've got 90 degrees here and 30 degrees here. Right? Well, let's just take one half of this. So I'm going to just take this half and put it over here. Uh, that's, that's not a very good... Just a little bit better. Well, I know that this length is 1 and this length is 1 half. This is 60 degrees and this is 30 degrees. This is 90 degrees. Uh, so then, uh, what is 30 degrees? Well, if, if uh, or sorry, let's do 60 degrees first because it's more like um, what we've got. If I, if I go back to this picture, the 60 degree angle would be kind of like this, right? So the x value is going to be 1 half. So the cosine of 60 degrees is going to be uh, 1 half. And then what's the sine of 60 degrees going to be? Well, so if we have this thing again, this triangle here with 60 degrees and the right angle here, what I can do is I can say, well, I know a squared plus b squared equals c squared, so I'll run the same sort of trick. I'm going to call this a. I've got a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Uh, this is the Pythagorean theorem. So I've got a squared plus, well, b is 1 half. 1 half quantity squared equals, that's my c squared, equals 1 squared. So I've got a squared equals, uh, so, so I need to subtract 1 quarter from both sides. a squared equals 3 fourths, which means a is going to equal the square root of 3 fourths. And that's the same as saying a is equal to the square root of 3 over 2. So here, 
I've got the square root of 3 over 2 for that corresponding y value. Now, there's a different type of symmetry because 30 degrees and 60 degrees are uh, complementary. So since I just did this angle, well then actually the mirror image of that angle is 30 degrees. It's going to have the same x and y values but flipped. So I've got 1 half for the sine of 30 degrees and square root of 3 over 2 for the cosine of 30 degrees. Now a, a nice little trick to notice that that I'm just going to sort of put in here. This is square root of 0 over 2. This is the square root of 1 over 2. This is the square root of 2 over 2. This is the square root of 3 over 2. And this is the square root of 4 over 2. And if you can remember what the special values are, and it's not super hard because I, I think because they're all multiples of 15 degrees. All right, we've got 0, then 30, 45, 60, and 90. If you can remember those, then you can remember the, the, and then remember this little pattern that it's square root of 0 over 2, square root of 1 over 2, square root of 2 over 2, square root of 3 over 2, square root of 4 over 2, then you've got this part of the chart written down. Moreover, this part of the chart is the same as that part of the chart, but backwards. 0, 0, 1 half, 1 half, root 2 over 2, root 2 over 2, root 3 over 2, root 3 over 2, and finally 1 and 1. Okay, so hopefully that little trick um, will save you some time trying to memorize this chart. And if you ever get totally lost, you can rederive it from first principles just using the Pythagorean theorem, which is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. I guess I should write that down, shouldn't I? I've been using the Pythagorean theorem. Probably most people know it. It's also got other names, Pythagorean theorem. And that is if I have a right triangle, so I need a 90 degree angle here, then I've got A and B are the, the legs, or the, or the straight sides, and C is the hypotenuse, or the diagonal side. Then I have A squared plus B squared equals C squared. And I think we've already talked about this when we were doing distances. But what matters is that this is a right angle. There are times when it's tempting to use the Pythagorean theorem when you don't have a right angle somewhere in the triangle, and then it's not necessarily true. All right, so that is an introduction to sine and cosine. I want to go a little bit further, and I'm going to just sort of re-describe some aspects of those derivations. So given a right triangle, with acute angle theta, we define the following functions on theta in terms of the lengths oops, of the adjacent leg opposite leg and of the hypotenuse. All right, so uh, I'm just going to draw a picture here and then I'll define these things for you. So if this is my that's that's I can do better than that. If this is my right triangle and here's my acute angle theta. So this this angle happens to also be acute in this case, but you know, depending on how, you know, if, if I had drawn something like this, um, uh, whatever, uh, it's, it's fine, it's no big deal. Um, I guess in the case of a right triangle, we're always going to have an acute angle. Um, uh, that's correct. So, whatever, it's fine. Uh, this is the adjacent leg, because here's my, here's the, the start of my angle. This leg is the adjacent leg, whereas this leg is the opposite leg, and of course the diagonal bit is called the hypotenuse. Then we can define sine of theta as the length of the opposite leg divided by the length of the hypotenuse. And we can define cosine of theta as the length of the adjacent leg over the length of the hypotenuse. Uh, this, if you check, uh, will line back up with what we had on the previous page when we were doing the... Um, 
Pythagorean theorem. So uh, that's, you know, getting this adjacent opposite and hypotenuse. Um, so you can check that all those, uh, you can check that all those functions make sense, all, the, all those special values of the functions make sense. And moreover, this allows us to define uh, more general terms. So, so we only know some special values for the, for the moment, but we'll eventually see how to get some more values out. Anyways, let's do a quick computational example, and then I'll let you escape. Given a right triangle, so that means it's got a right angle somewhere, with an angle of 60 degrees next to a side of length 20 feet. And when I say side, um, so if, if it was the hypotenuse, then I would specify hypotenuse. So if it's uh, next to a side of length 20 feet, how long is the hypotenuse? So by context, we can assume this is not the hypotenuse. Okay, now solution. What we're going to do is we're going to call the length of the hypotenuse keep getting ahead of myself here call the length of the hypotenuse x and then we're going to draw the following picture so 60 degrees is more than 45 degrees so it looks something like this here's 60 degrees here's um, my right angle I said the length of the hypotenuse is x, and this, this uh, not 20 degrees, 20 feet, this adjacent side is 20 feet. Right? So how do I do this? I'm going to write, well, uh, I know that the sine of theta is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse, and I know that the cosine of theta is equal to the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. So now I could use this formula. But in order to use that, I would, I would need to do some more work. So instead, I'm going to use this formula because I have the adjacent side right here, and I've got the hypotenuse right there. Okay, so I'm going to look at the cosine of 60 degrees, and I'm going to write it down two ways. Cosine of 60 degrees is the hypotenuse, sorry, uh, oops, the adjacent side over the hypotenuse, and that is, from our picture here, that's 20 over x. 20 divided by x, but I also know, if I remember from my chart, that the cosine of 60 degrees is 1 half, right? The cosine of 60 degrees is 1 half. So now I just solve this equation. I've got 1 half is equal to 20 over x. I multiply both sides by uh, 2x, then I get x equals 40 feet. Now you might say, wait, how do I know I'm not dividing by zero? I, I'm just solving for x here, right? I can plug x back in. If, if, if I put 40 in here, I'm not dividing by zero, it's fine. Okay, so uh, I strongly recommend that you flip through this, this part in the book. This is just a bare bones introduction to the most basic ideas of sine and cosine. We're going to be doing a lot more with them. We'll be coming up with some other ways of uh, looking at them. And uh, this is just a start. So if it's, if it's not totally making sense or some of the things went too quickly, that's okay. Just try to get what you can from this. Read through the relevant section in the book, and hopefully this will make sense in time.